the very first entry point of a great record should give it away. Let's go, girls. I remember feeling Let's awkward. Let's go, girls. Come on. <laughs> He'd play the riff and then stop and then say, you're on, it's you. You know, bring the goods. Finally, he stops at the end of the riff and I say, man, I feel like a woman. I want the role reversal. <laughs> I'm like, I want to see some man boobs. Those lyrics really hit a chord with me. There's a sense in the country music business. Don't step over the line. Best thing about I was already pushing the limits in the country genre. This was going to push things over the limits. Oh my gosh, are we going to get crushed for this? It just made me feel like I'm standing up for myself. I'm not apologetic about all the things that are criticized, that's too tight, that's too short. For me to just start even recognizing that I'm okay with being a girl. It wasn't a courageous thing to write this sort of statement, but once I said it, then I'm like, this is a very satisfying thing to say. Man, I feel like a woman. Man, I Feel Like a Woman is a signature song for my entire career. It changed things for me as an artist, of course. Right now, I'm doing a residency in Las Vegas. The show is called Let's Go. Everyone that comes to the show, if there's no other song they know, they know Man, I Feel Like a Woman. It's been a real journey, this song. I've come such a long way. I grew up in Northern Ontario between two little small mining towns, Sudbury and Timmins, Ontario. We lived a fairly rustic life. There's seven people in our family. We were not very monetarily comfortable. My little brothers were younger, there was a gap. I spent a lot of time with my dad. I think I was more my dad's little boy, kind of in a way. I loved getting my hands dirty. I loved chopping wood. I loved driving around the truck. What, I guess, most people would consider boyish things. When the violence really got heavy in my house, my parents start fighting and it's gonna escalate and I know it's gonna get nasty. I might run away with my guitar in the bush for a few hours. I felt more comfortable exploring my voice alone. I never wanted to get out there and show people my music. But as I got a little bit older, my parents pretty much forced me to get out there and sing in front of people. And then I started playing in bars. This is where it was more about, let's get 25 bucks here, let's get 50 bucks there. It became more serious for my mother. So by the time I'm 11, I'm a working professional singer. You know, I grew up very shy about my breasts and I didn't like the fact that I was developing curves. I resisted going from this boyish girl to all of a sudden now being more of a distraction for boys. I hated that. I started strapping down my body and wearing really loose clothes. I had already in my mind decided I needed to like liberate myself. So I graduated at 17 when I moved to Toronto and I decide I am going to do music but my way. I'm asked to join a little band. I needed to now learn a new repertoire doing top 40 rock and pop and it opened up my horizons. Some of the friends that I meet, they were all guys. They all loved playing with fashion and fun hair colors and styles, and they helped me and they dressed me up. We would go to the gay bars. I was more comfortable in that environment to get out there and shake it up and let it all hang out. That affected a lot of my thinking and my whole spirit of letting go too. I'm 21 and I'm like living my life in Toronto and my parents die. Now I've got to go back to Timmins and rethink everything. My brothers, my kids, I always say, it's not like our parents left us enough to support the kids. I'm in a mode of like, do I run away and leave the kids to some sort of foster care? Cause like, I'm not even barely an adult. What I decided to do in the end was get a music job at a resort that was a very steady paying job, joining the cast at Terrorhurst. Music I did not understand, like big band music and off-Broadway kind of performances. 
very glamorous. I had to wear dresses and high heel shoes, and I had to learn how to, you know, put on foundation and lipstick and wear makeup. Very foreign, but it paid the bills. So I could keep the kids, support them, get a mortgage, and just become a full-time working parent. That was a three-year phase that the kids were going to outgrow, and they did. They were done with high school, done with being parented by Big Sister, and all of a sudden, I'm free to get out there and pursue whatever it is I'm supposed to be doing for the rest of my life. If it's going to be music, I got to start making records. I made the trip over to Nashville and did some demos with a couple of producers and some record label meets. And what came out of that was my record deal with Mercury Nashville at the time. Took me in as a lost bird. A lot of people who come to Nashville spend a lot of time there before they become artists. Shania just parachuted in from Canada, and so did I from Los Angeles, where I had been working pop and rock records. My title was the president of Mercury Records in Nashville, and there weren't a lot of women on the label when I arrived. Shania was one. We got to know each other really quickly. I think the kinship that we felt for each other was that we had both just walked into this new arena. We had no fucking idea what we were doing, really. I'm very unfamiliar with how to act or be a country music artist. She, like me, had been exposed to all different genres of music, and she had performed different genres of music. I know country music inside out. I grew up singing country music in bars, but I didn't expect to be expected to look like a country girl. Image-wise, I thought that that was up to me. The record label were worried that I was just not country enough. So they needed me to go back into the studio and get more country and get more country looking. They were trying to mold me into something that I wasn't, but I think that they were just trying to do it for my own good so that I didn't get rejected by the genre. I think she could have fit the mold. I don't think she wanted to. My writing style was definitely not typical enough either for the country market at the time. A lot of the artists in Nashville have traditionally cut songs that were presented to them by publishing companies. She wasn't allowed to use a lot of her own songs. She wanted to be a songwriter. I get a call from a producer. I don't know who this guy is yet. His name is Mutt, that's all I know. I think it's a very strange name. Anyway, so I get on the phone with Mutt and we're talking about what I'm writing and I start singing through the phone, you know, with my guitar, and then he plays me some of the things he's working on. And I'm like, wow, like, Mutt was an experienced rock producer, but was not in the country music genre. And I'm like, it's so not country. <laughs> like, I'm gonna be so in trouble. I'm already not country enough. I can't resist, because the stuff I'm hearing on the phone is so amazing. I'm like really blown away. Some of my superiors were not happy about Mutt Lang being a producer. A ton of people thought she and I were just fucking crazy. Mutt Lang's gonna make a country record. It's gonna sound like nothing else. You're nuts. Mutt and I eventually get in the same room. We start writing. We get into this rhythm of the way we work together as collaborators. He would write riffs. I would do my more like folk style writing. And I'd focus a lot on lyrics, phrasings, things like that. And then we would get together and then combine everything. We're at the breakfast table and he's got this riff. Da -da 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 -da. That chug. You know, he's rocking away there on his groove. And he goes, come on, get into some phrasing. I start singing a melody, kind of bluesy. Down and down and down down down. It just felt natural, no lyrics yet. But Mutt says, I want the phrase to end with a signature hook. He was relentless with the groove and line till I came up with something. He'd play the riff and then stop and then say, you're on, it's you, you know, bring the goods. Finally, he stops at the end of the riff and I say, man, I feel like a woman. He's like, that's it, that's it, you got it. When the man I feel like a woman statement came out, then it was so obvious the song was about liberated, independent human being, person, celebrating your own spirit. And I felt it all through the songwriting. I'm going out tonight. I'm just thinking this feels like a party song. Won't let it all hang out. It just made me feel like I'm standing up for myself. I'm not apologetic about all the things that are criticized, that I've experienced in my own life, that's too tight, that's too short. For me to just start even recognizing that 
I'm okay with being a girl. Just because I'm wearing something that flatters my body doesn't mean I'm showing off. I'm not even necessarily doing it for you. I was just thinking, I'm finally feeling good being a woman. I'm finally starting to get comfortable in my own skin. Whatever it means, it's just me. Man, I feel like a woman. The song was completely written on acoustic guitar. Before we went into the studio to record Man, I Felt Like a Woman. I'm also revisiting all of this. Da 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 bow. That is the signature entry of the song. The signature sound was introduced in the studio. We were just both sitting around going, okay, we need something that's very like immediate. That's Man, I Feel Like a Woman. What makes it really anthemic right off the bat? We're thinking big crowds, if you heard that in a stadium. It's very sport-esque in our minds. We just wanted to hear the crowd roar at that moment. So, you know, you hear the da 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 and then you hear, <sighs> Let's go, girls. The let's go, girls happen just in the moment and doing vocals, being in the spirit. I remember thinking, I'm such a bad actress. I cannot sound natural speaking the lyrics. I want to go right to that riff that the verses had to be written around. The phrasing is so important, even if you were speaking it. So I'm going out tonight and I'm feeling all right. Gonna let it all hang out. It can't be any other way. It was a lot of late night singing, a lot of repetition. There's so much rhythmically going on that I have to be very precise in my timing. There's a ah uh, in there. No inhibitions, make no conditions, get a little out of line. So the ah, is very important. You just it's felt so expressive gross. with the ah, ooh. I wasn't trying to be Michael Jackson or anything like that. I think I was thinking Cyndi Lauper in that moment of the like, uh uh oh. Oh, I wanna be free, yeah. The harmonies. Really go wild, Okay, so you can hear Mutt in there. It was always Mutt and I doing all of the backing vocals. He has a very high voice. It works perfectly great in a pop rock country song. There's steel guitar on this track. If you heard that part by itself, not knowing that this was Man, I Feel Like a Woman, you may not associate it with it. It really just added the flavor of country to the track. Man, I Feel Like a Woman was pushing my genre boundaries because musically, it was not limited to one genre. It's rock, it's pop, it's country. It's a great solo. To me, that's a very country rock solo. <laughs> I air guitar that every night. I'm really good at air guitaring that. I would win an air guitar contest doing that. I could never play it myself. And then there's more layers, they just keep coming in. When you think that the song started out at the breakfast table, just two guitars from an acoustic song, this quite broad production still doesn't overwhelm the song. The spirit of the song is the same regardless. I think it's just more of a feeling that resonates stripped down or loaded up. And man, I feel like a woman. The song was solid, on the record, decided that it would be a single, and now we needed to match the hit with the rest of the story, which was the video. Let's go, girls. The video started really brainstorming with Mark Bauer. My name is Mark Bauer. I am a fashion designer. I'm a stylist. The video for Man, I Feel Like a Woman was already into the relationship that I developed with Mark Bauer. When I come on board, there's already a treatment. It's an ode, it's an homage to the Robert Palmer video, Addicted to Love. It was Mutt's idea, because of the riff, to do the coloring, the red, the black, and the white. He is in the front and he has those crazy, beautiful girls that all look like models with the slick back hair and the big orange red lips, just kind of barely strumming those guitars and just moving from side to side. I did not want to do a cliche take. It's a great song to me. It, just, it deserves something much more exciting and pushing boundaries further. Being a person of the queer community, those lyrics really hit a chord with me. Mark Bauer gets to work on building that costume. This was a chance to try something unexpected. I want the role reversal. It was just a vision. And I thought, well, what would a man look good in that's not a suit, but a woman could also wear? That's why I came up with the high women's coat, the top hat, the kind of equestrian look. 
But then let's put a veil over her face to make it look more feminine. And she just loved it. Shania is definitely a little bit of a tomboy. She likes sporty clothes. She likes kind of no makeup, no hair. And then she puts on the lashes and puts on the hair and the makeup and the big smile and the teeth come out. And she's just this holy cow. She's just, whoa, my God, this woman is gorgeous. Just look at her. There were times where I really had to stand my ground. We got flack for doing some of the stuff that we did for her at that time. I know she got it. And it was just totally the antithesis of what other country music videos were. It was taking country music in a place that it hadn't been, and some people didn't like that. It was too pop and too sexy and too outrageous, and you know, you're ruining country music, and we're conservative country folks here. I remember as well the art department saying, you know, this is way too sexy. The women are not gonna like this. They're gonna be, they're gonna feel threatened. It's so high fashion, you're gonna alienate part of your audience. And I said, I don't think you guys get it. As women, they're gonna totally get it. Let's go, girls. I was already pushing the limits in the country genre. This was gonna push things over the limits. And the lips were a big part of it, the makeup and the veil. I didn't want the guys to just kind of be ordinary either. They should look totally sexy and they should have makeup on and tight, shiny pants. You can see their pectorals, their abs. I wanted to reverse that role of exploitation. <laughs> I'm like, I wanna see some man boobs. The video was a big part of expressing an extension of what I was trying to say in the lyrics. I wanted it to evolve with these peeling away layers of clothes, layers of this person coming off and revealing a different side of my inner self. The best thing about being when you hear the lyrics, you can either be very literal or you can totally let that go out the window. And she says, man's shirts, short skirts. You have to do that. We made the, sure that skirt was really short. It's almost like we got home from work, we're taking off our shirt, but we've got this really sexy dress underneath. This is showing another you. Maybe it's a you that you want to be. Maybe this is the real me. It says so much more than man and woman. You know, there's so much more between man and woman. There's this whole area in between. <laughs> Man, I Feel Like a Woman is a very sexy video, but it's not sexual. It's just owning your sexuality, and it's fine to do that. Not about being sexual, it's about being sexy. We're starting to develop as a very personal celebration of being feminine, and letting it all hang out was new to me. I felt kind of allowed to do it through the song and through the video. Man, I feel like a woman. It was always a statement that I was convinced was something I had to get out there and sing and share. We come with this massive video. A great music video can really put the artist over the top. My intentions were certainly to now join other global artists' level of success. Suddenly this little country girl became a mega star. Because not only did she have the country audience, she crossed over into pop. This video was so huge. Turning on the turbo for that album. I mean, we'd already had some hits, but that was like nuts. It just blew the whole thing through the roof. It's magical. Tonight! At the 1999 Grammys, she performed Man, I Feel Like a Woman. The height of the success of that album, that video had just come out. Early on in the success of the song, I'm in a tour bus. We pull up to a light and there is a trucker, a hairy guy, bearded, baseball cap, and his window is down and he is singing to Man, I Feel Like a Woman. He's playing on the radio, but he's singing it with all his heart and he's loving it. My first reaction was, I hear my song. And then the second thing is, I wonder if that guy realizes, like, does he know what he's actually saying? He's just singing along. But I thought, it doesn't really matter. And it was only then that I actually realized that there were so many options to the ownership of that song. Man, I feel like a woman definitely expanded Shania's base to so many different kinds of people, whether you're gay or you're straight, wherever you come from all over the world, she just united people. I think Shania completely broke the mold of what a country singer should look like or sound like. Now you could have country songs that sounded popish, and you could have pop songs that has a little bit of country twang to it. There's always been love songs, and there's always been cheating songs, and drinking songs, and train songs, and pain songs. There hasn't been anything close to Man, I Feel Like a Woman. <laughs>
you don't really think of the effect that it's going to have. And it's only years after, and then they become iconic. I hadn't deliberately written that, I feel like a woman, for any particular person, except for the way I was feeling and the way the groove was falling into place. The way it affects others in the audience, for each one of them, it's a different story. Whether it's little girls that use it as a platform to express themselves, or moms going out to let their hair down. It might be a gay couple high-fiving and hugging. It endures, and you don't have to have been there when it was created or when it became a hit. That's the sign of a classic, I think. I mean, that's my simple term for it. It's like everyone's song, and they all take ownership of it in a different way, even regardless of what the song stands for and represents and has come to represent. The LGBTQ community embraces it. They seem to express more that it's like a Freedom Call song. When we shot that video, the word fluid was not even I think, a word in anyone's vocabulary. People didn't want to mix up the gender like that. And it started to resonate with people that, yes, a man can feel like a woman and a woman can feel like a man. And you can celebrate it and you can have fun with it and you can do whatever you want. And that song says it. Let's go, girls. You go to so many drag shows and there's always somebody doing a Shania impression. And it's just such a joyous feeling. At the end of the day, it is just a great song that everyone can identify with. Man, I feel like a woman. If there's a drag version of Shania, I made it. Man, I Feel Like a Woman is a signature song for my entire career. This song was absorbed by a global audience, which changed things for me as an artist, of course. I'm part of pop culture now. It wasn't a courageous thing to write this sort of statement, but once I said it, then I'm like, this is a very satisfying thing to say. Man, I feel like a woman, and I love that. Hi! <laughs> How are you? Oh my god, it's good to see you again. <laughs> oh, look at you! <laughs> you look awesome. You look beautiful. I love myself in you. Man, I feel like a woman. Thank <laughs> you.